Hello everyone, welcome back, Fred here at Math and Engineering. We are going to do a question for you just so we can uh, prepare you for your midterms. We know um, at this point in time in the semester for civil engineers, uh, the midterms are coming up for Strengths of Materials uh, 1 or Mechanics of Materials 1. So there's going to be some bending moment diagram questions, possibly some questions uh, involving beams like this with different loadings where you're going to be asked to find the shear or the bending moment at a certain point. Okay, so we're going to do both of those for you today in this question and we're going to show you a few tricks that you can look for that will save you time in the exam. So with uh, that being said, let's get started. Let's take a look at question A here. Okay, so we're and we're dealing with internal forces here. So we have a beam. Okay, it's made up of three different distributed loads. Okay, Q1, Q2, and Q3, and uh, the entire length of the beam is uh, eight plus four plus four. So we have 16 meters. So it says ask us to de determine the internal shear and moment at point C. Okay, so point C is right in the center here. It's between uh, points A and B, and we're asked to find the. Uh, the internal shear and the internal moment. Okay, so we know that you should know by this point that to find the internal forces at on a member, okay, you need to cut it. Okay, so you need to cut it at that point. And when you cut it, so internal forces don't show from from the outside, right? Because they're uh, they're acting within the beam and they're counteracting each other and they're also counteracting external forces. But when we cut the beam at a point, those internal forces are going to show and that's exactly what we're going to do in this question. But first what we need to do is we need to find the reactions. Okay, so we need to find the reactions and then we can evaluate what we're asked to. So let's go ahead and do that and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a free body diagram down here where this line is. So let's go ahead and resolve the forces that we have. Uh, in the distributed loads, we're going to resolve them into point loads. Okay, so we have this 200 distributed load here, and we can just say that the distributed load is whatever we can say kilonewton per meter. Okay, all right, and uh, let's just go ahead and start our free body diagram. So we have our AY reaction here, we have our BY reaction here, we have a 200 uh, kilonewton per meter distributed load. We're going to multiply that by four, we're going to get 800 kilonewton down. Okay, we have a 300 kilonewton per meter load here over 8 meters, right? So we are going to get a 2400 kilonewton force down, and this is an obvious symmetrical beam, so this is going to be the same. Okay, so, and that's one more thing I want to point out is, as we can see, we have a symmetrical beam. Okay, so when we have a symmetrical beam, there's a lot of things that we can... Uh, a lot of shortcuts that we can take, this being one of them. Okay, we know that the loadings are the same, so if we find the concentrated load here, it's going to be the same on the other side. Okay, same with the reactions, right? If we find A reaction because it's symmetrical, we know that the BY reaction is going to be exactly the same thing. And that is going to save you a lot of time on the test. Okay, if uh, the professor puts something like this, you can immediately use that trick. And it'll probably save you a lot of time to be honest. Okay, so we have, let's just put our dimensions here. We have two meters, we have four meters here, and we have two meter sections. So let's go ahead and the and writing these little uh, dimensions on the free body diagram are really important when we're finding the reactions on the moment because if we find the reactions wrong, the whole question is wrong. So don't make that mistake. So let's go ahead and start with uh, our reactions. Let's take the moment at point A. Okay, so we could take either the moment at A or B, but I just chose A because why not? So let's go ahead and do this. We have, uh, let's start with this force on the left. So we have an 800 kilonewton force and we uh, assumed counterclockwise as our positive direction. This is counterclockwise. So we're going to say it's positive 800 kilonewtons times two meters. I'm not gonna write the units in. Uh, we have a 24 kilonewton force down here. That's gonna be acting in our negative direction, right? This way, about point A and it's going to be times four. Okay, and we'll just do the last two real quick. We have uh, BY is going to be counterclockwise, positive, times 8, and we have 800 times 10. Okay, and if we go ahead and we put that in our calculator, right, so we have 8,000 plus 2,400 times 4. I'm just reversing all the signs kind of in my head because I know I'm going to have to put them to the other side of the equation, right? And we have 16, minus 1,600 divided by 8. Okay, we are going to get that BY is equal to 2,000 kilonewton. And that is going to be acting upwards, okay, because we assumed an upwards direction and we got an, a, a positive result for our BY. Now, like I said before, because this is a symmetrical beam, we know that the reactions are going to be the same. So, uh, by 
you know, by that logic, we can say that Ay is also 2,000 kilonewton. This only works if the beam is symmetrical. If the beam is not the same on both sides, if you cut it, cut it down the center and there's any difference on the right or left side in terms of distances or forces or anything like that, you cannot make this assumption. You have to calculate both reactions uh, individually. Okay. So don't make that mistake. Perfect. So now, uh, now that we have the reactions, we can go about determining the internal shear and moment at point C. So how do we do that? Well, you can cut it either from the right or the left. Okay. Uh, we're going to cut it from the left here, okay? And when we cut it from the left, you need to know the sign convention. So let's go ahead and cut it from the left side. So we have our beam here, okay? And we're going to make a cut at C. So we're making a cut at C, so this is point A. This is point C. So when we cut it, okay, we have a shear force. We're going to label V, that's going down, okay? So this is cut here, and we have a moment and the moment is acting in the counterclockwise direction and the shear is acting down. Okay, so just draw it like that and then just evaluate um, the moment and the shear, or the moment from this point and the shear. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So, all right, so we're at point C, right? So now we have this four meter distance here, right? This is four meters, okay? We've just cut the beam at C here. It's point C. So we have this four meter distance with this distributed load acting on it, which is 300 kilonewton per meter. So let's go ahead and resolve that. And that's going to be 1200 kilonewtons. Okay. And that is acting, and this is four meters, right? It's acting always in the center. The distributed load is acting at the center, so it's two meters from the right and two meters from the left. That's also two meters. Okay. And, well, what else do we have? We have our Ay reaction, right, that we calculated over here. That's Ay is equal to 2000 kilonewton, right? And we have a distributed load from point A to the end of the cantilever here. So we have 200 kilonewton meters, we have 4 meters, so that is going to equal an 800 kilonewton force down, okay, and 2 meters on both sides. Okay, so now that we have written out our beam, okay, that our cut beam at point C, now all we need to do is evaluate, uh, solve for V and solve for M, our two unknowns. Okay, so what I did kind of forget to mention before, okay, is that when we cut the beam, we also have an axial force here, okay? This, this axial force uh, acting um, in this plane here along the beam, okay, and in almost all cases at this level is going to be equal to zero, okay, because there are no, uh, we're not really measuring the axial force in a beam. The, when, we, when we measure a beam, we're actually concerned with mostly the bending moment of the beam, not the axial force. If we're measuring columns, the axial force is of, of concern, but so that's a little bit beyond the scope of this course. Okay, so uh, I didn't include that in the question because the normal force acting on the beam, or the axial force, is equal to zero. So anyway, let's get back on topic here. Let's find, solve for the shear, okay? So we're going to take our shear, our V here like this, okay? And we're going to say, okay, the force is in the y direction with up being positive. Just de define a uh, positive direction. Okay, and we see that the shear down here is negative. Okay, so whenever you cut the beam and you're looking at it from the left side, you, the, you're always going to write V is down. That's just every single time. Never change that. Never put V is up. V is always down. And then you can say that up is positive. Okay, so then you have negative V. Okay, and we have a downward force of negative 1200 kilonewton. We have an upward force of plus 2000. And we have a negative force of 800 kilonewton. That's all equal to zero. Okay, so just move the B to the other side, uh, compute this. Okay, so we have 2,000 minus 1,200 minus 800. What is that equal to? That is equal to zero. So the shear force, okay, of the beam at the center is equal to zero. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and let's calculate the moment next. Okay, so we have the moment at, from point C. Okay, so now that we've cut the beam at point C, okay, we have this moment here and we're evaluating all of these forces about point C. So we're going to take the distance of all the forces to point C. And we're going to say counterclockwise is positive, so we have this free moment here at the end. That's going to be equal to M. Okay, we are going to have a 1200 kilonewton force times 2 meters, that's positive, 1200 times 2. We have AY, which is 2000, that's in the negative direction times four, and we have the 800 kilonewton force, which is six meters in the positive direction, and that is equal to zero. 
Okay, so we have four terms, and all we need to do here, isolate for m and solve it. Okay, so m is equal to eight hundred kilonewton meter. Perfect. Okay, so uh, that's what we've done. Okay, we've accomplished what we need. We've determined the internal shear and force and the moment at point C. Come back for the next video. We're going to draw the bending moment and the shear force diagrams for uh, this beam. Stay tuned for that.